Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. The coronavirus refuses to slow its spread. Today, the state sees its largest single-day increase since the outbreak began, and now the rush is on to make sure hospitals are ready for a sudden surge. Glad you're with us today for Local 4 News at 5. The latest numbers are out. They're not good. Officially, there are 1,791 cases of the coronavirus across 41 counties. And the number of deaths has sadly risen as well to a total of 24 as of today. Let's check out the county by county numbers now. Take a look at Detroit and Wayne County, 873 cases there. Oakland has 428, Macomb 225, and Washtenaw 50. Jamie Edmonds has some insight into what this new stay at home lifestyle is like. Dr. Frank McGeorge has some expert insight into the latest spike in cases. Let's start though with Priya Mann live in Oakland County with new measures being taken to try to slow the spread. Priya. Yeah, Devin Kim, new rules are going into effect for essential businesses in Oakland County to keep workers and customers safe. And in a sign of the time, officials held a press conference via Facebook Live. We're not trying to fill the jails with our business owners. What we're trying to do is provide clear guidance. In an effort to reduce the spread of coronavirus, a new Oakland County order requires businesses that have been deemed essential and are open to implement daily screening programs. That includes asking on a daily basis, what are your symptoms? What kind of close contact you may have had with a confirmed case? Have you traveled internationally or domestically over the last 14 days? If employees display or report symptoms, they must go home. Workers can return if they go three days without a fever, without taking medication, and it's been a week since their first symptoms. Health officials also recommend using no-touch thermometers to check employees' temperatures. You would want your screening station to be as close to the front door as possible so that anyone coming into your building would be screened before gaining entry into the building. But if the screening is positive, for any of the questions or for the temperature, they will be asked to go right back to their vehicle. As of Tuesday, there have been 436 coronavirus cases in Oakland County. 100 people have been hospitalized and five people have since died. As the case count rises, businesses and the public must enforce social distancing of at least six feet. We believe that most businesses will step up and do the right thing. Now, these new rules go into effect Wednesday at noon, expected to remain in place until at least April 13th. Business owners who are not following the rules could face misdemeanor fines or penalties. Reporting live from Ferndale, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Okay, Priya, thanks. Well, every day we keep reporting increasing numbers of cases and deaths here in Michigan. But what is the, what's the picture that those numbers are painting for us? What can we read into them? In other words, we bring in Dr. Frank George for more on that. Doc? Yeah, Kim and Devin. So let me give you a little perspective. In documented cases, Michigan is currently fifth in the nation. And in deaths, we are currently seventh. So make no mistake, Michigan has been hit hard. And I say has been because the nearly vertical daily increase in case counts is frankly only limited by our testing capacity, which is running at full tilt. But the fact is, we have absolutely no idea where the top of those case counts are going to go yet. Yeah, and we know you were on a conference call with the state updating the situation. Frank, how does it look in other parts of the state? Well, that's important, Kim. So while there's definitely been more consistent spread in heavily populated areas, especially southeast Michigan, there are large areas of the state that have only been minimally affected. Right now, though, our area is the hardest hit with many hospitals, frankly, pushing past their usual capacity. Well, and already. if hospitals are already pushing their capacity, then uh, how close do you think we are to seeing a shortage of hospital beds? Yeah, all right. So I can only put this in some perspective. Here's where it stands now. One of the most sobering facts that I took away from the call was that as of last night, we have not successfully removed any COVID-19 patients from a ventilator. Mm. Now, some wow. are hopefully on their way to recovery, but here's the deal. This is a zero sum issue. Every patient that stays on a ventilator, then every new patient that yeah. needs a ventilator yeah. will eventually equal the total number of available ventilators. That is a problem. So I need to give everyone a serious reality check about how this is going. Right now, we are right in a position to care for everyone as we would have under normal circumstances. But 
we are rapidly approaching a point where that will not be possible. Mm -hmm. And that's when the hard decisions are going to have to be made about who gets limited supplies of ventilators and other types of care. And that is why the governor's order to stay home, stay safe, is absolutely what we need to be doing right now. You need to approach every single person that you have contact with as if they are carrying the virus. And I realize that is a really hard way to live, but that yeah. level of caution is actually what will help slow the spread of the virus and give us all the best opportunities to save as many lives as possible. Yeah. yeah, so right, you know, Doc, when I hear people talk about comparing it to flu season, we have a lot of people that get the flu every year, a lot of people die. We don't talk about hospitals running out of capacity uh, right. when it's about the flu. We don't talk about doctors being afraid to see people who have the flu. It's different, right? Yeah. That is absolutely right. It's, you know, it's not just like a, a sense that it's different. It is actually different. Mm -hmm. During flu season, we definitely bump capacity on some days, but this is very different because these are long-term patients on ventilators yeah. that are not coming off. And as we get sicker patients coming in, again, it is going to be a zero-sum issue. Yeah. We will run out of resources if we do not slow the curve. Yeah. We need to slow down the influx of patients. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, Doc, more from you just ahead. Indeed. All right. Well, when Governor Whitmer issued the stay at home order, she said it would be hard. So here we are on day one. We got 21 more days to go. Our Jamie Edmonds set out to see how it's going with a new abnormal, now a reality. We've all been making changes now for a week or so, but it feels different today. It feels like the people are listening to the governor's orders. Traffic was very light today in the village of Gross Point. Light as in a car or two. This is what day one of the governor's stay at home, stay safe mandate looks like. We did run into a dad and daughter out and about. Just taking a walk, getting some fresh air, getting rid of some energy. Paul Lindblom says he is a college student, a high schooler and a kindergartner and the house is getting smaller by the minute but everyone is coping just fine. It's going. I realize why I never became a kindergarten teacher. In the neighborhood, we found the Hindelang family taking a break. Yeah, we're, we're just fine. Dad is in the auto industry and these days working from home. The family is trying to see the silver lining in all of this. That's a happy byproduct of this, you know, being together. I, I travel a lot for work, so I'm, I'm home now, uh, which is nice, and reconnecting and getting to see what the kids are doing in school. You know, rather than just seeing the work that comes home, actually getting to be involved with their education. We asked the kids their favorite parts of this new lifestyle. Not being at school was the number one answer. I'm happy about that. Uh, kind of, but you have to do work too. It's good to get a break from school, but soon you just want to go back for a little bit. What's the best thing you do during the day? Watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, we're all in the same boat, just trying to get through this. In Gross Point, Jamie Edmonds, Local 4. Honest, gotta love that. Well, a major bounce back for Wall Street. Stocks rebounded as hope builds that Congress is soon going to pass a coronavirus relief package. The Dow soaring more than 2,100 points, its best one-day gain since 1933 as a part of percentage. The S&P 500 gaining 9%, while the Nasdaq finished up 8%. Coronavirus cancellations have spread to the Olympics as the International Olympic Committee postpones the 2020 Tokyo Games. The IOC made the decision after speaking with Japan's prime minister and the game's local organizers. This past week, U.S. and Canadian Olympic officials called for the games to be postponed. The IOC says the games will be held no later than summer of 2021. Tonight on Local 4 News at 6, we have reaction from some local athletes. Now to major news in Macomb County. Prosecutor Eric Smith has been hit with 10 criminal corruption charges. One of the charges, running a criminal enterprise. That's a 20-year felony. This all involves the alleged misuse of county forfeiture funds. Rod Maloney following that story. Rod Smith's attorney just issued a statement, I know. Yes, he did, Devin. And, you know, rarely do we see this stark a difference in positions. That attorney said that they are shocked and dismayed at what they call politically motivated charges against the prosecutor. On the other hand, the prosecutor, the attorney general rather, is claiming that the prosecutor actually made his office ground zero for a racketeering operation. After the state police raided his office last April and then again his home a month later, prosecutor Eric Smith said, I recognize that, you know, 
th th this doesn't look great. Tonight, it's beyond a bad look. Smith now charged with conducting that criminal enterprise, five counts of embezzlement by a public official, misconduct in office, tampering with evidence, accessory after the fact using a computer to commit or conspire to commit a crime. The state alleging his right-hand man, current prosecutor's office operations manager, and former Macomb County State Representative and County Treasurer Derek Miller committed misconduct in office and conspiracy to commit a legal act in an illegal manner with Smith. Also charged, now retired prosecutor's office employee Benjamin Liston, and finally this man, William Weber Jr., who owns a security company. This all starts with a fight over who could manage a forfeiture account. Smith claimed it was his and allegedly refused to turn over records to the county. This got County Executive Mark Hackle's attention. He called the Attorney General's office. Surprised by the number of charges, but not surprised that there were charges being brought. In the end, Smith turned over money to the county, but not the records. Attorney General Dana Nessel said of the case. Smith and his cohorts elected to utilize these accounts as their own personal slush funds spent in order to enrich themselves or others, to build goodwill in the communities in which Smith would seek re-election. Now, this uh, case dates back, the Attorney General says, to 2012, believe it or not, and it involves about $600,000 allegedly stolen. Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle today gave credit to Treasurer uh, Larry Rocha, who originally fought with Smith over the forfeiture-run records because he did it when Derek Miller, who was Treasurer at the time, he claims, Hackle claims, did not want to chase Prosecutor Smith for these records. Back to you. Well, if you wonder what kind of teeth criminal enterprise has in it, Kwame Kilpatrick can tell you all about that. Uh, Rod, uh, mm -hmm. following the money here then, about where, where did the money go, well, that, uh, that, uh, according to Nessel? Well, uh, it... <laughs> Well, it's not, not Hackle, it's the Attorney General. The Attorney General claims that money went for things like makeup for secretaries, flowers, golf outings, and, uh, and then helping move one of the guys who was involved in this case, allegedly, to Arizona. Yeah, boy, oh boy. All right, obviously a lot more to come. What a, what a development. All right, Rod. Okay, we are off and running here on a Tuesday. Here's Ben. Kim and Devin, not quite to average today at 42, but we will be above that mark tomorrow. And if you're looking for good news, wait and see how long we stay in the 50s. Have you tried filing for unemployment benefits either by hopping online or calling, but you are stuck waiting? I know it's been incredibly frustrating for so many of you. That's why I'm working to get answers coming up in my Help Me Hank report. President Trump says he's trying to strike a balance between the public health crisis and the economic one. I'm Alice Barr in Washington. Coming up, the latest on when President Trump says he wants to see the country reopen.